No, that's a different thing. We're recording a, a, a message for our Sunday night group a bit later on. Is that okay, or do you want? No, go ahead. I don't know if we're going to go off. Well, you know how it begins. This is the seventh of the seven. To the angel of the church at Laodicea, write these are words, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. Throughout these seven letters, the references to Jesus, which are amazing because in the Old Testament, the, this is the way they speak of God Almighty, that connection between the Father and the Son. I know your works. Now, the previous letter was to the Philadelphians, and there was nothing negative. The letter before that, the five letters before, all had a sting, a challenge, but none is as challenging as the seventh. Wow. I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. With that, you are either cold or hot, so because you're lukewarm, I'm about to vomit you out of my mouth. Often this is taught that we need to express um, our commitment through being energetic, alert, and attentive. Not yawning, singing out loud, and being generally animated. <laughs> I doubt that that's what hot means here. Yeah. Firstly, because it's simply an analogy. Tulu can tell you later about the water sources and how cool water could end up being kept it warm or you know, hot water can be nice. But Jesus is clearly, in this picture, hot and cold are both pretty good. Mm -hmm. when I, when I drink something, I like it hot. It's coffee. I don't you know, want my coffee at room temperature. <laughs> if it's cold, anyway, you get the idea. So there's actually nothing here that says someone who's uninterested in the faith is cold, or someone who's hostile is cold, but then you warm up, and then you are lukewarm, which is even worse. See, it doesn't, this doesn't even work. And then finally you get hot. Okay, I understand. It suggests, it's almost implied, yeah, you need to be hot. Romans 12, 11 says, keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. That idea of the connection of heat, passion, ardor, fire, and commitment, that's a biblical thing. But it's probably reading a little too much into this passage where cold and hot are both acceptable, but just not lukewarm. And he says, because you're lukewarm, I love the word, you've got the hot, zestos, zestos, and you've got the cold, across. but this is chiaros. It starts with the heat, and it kind of catches in your mouth, which is apparently was catching in Jesus' mouth, because he says, because you're chiaros, I'm about to vomit you, I'm about to vomit you out of my mouth. Now, technically, they've not been vomited out yet. So if you want to, technically, they're still Christians. <coughs> technically, they're still the church, but they're in a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're not flat fired up? Because they're not energetic? No, we've not yet found out what the problem is. So preachers who stop there and say, well, someone's not expressive and then they don't really have the Spirit of God. You know, it's very easy to fake in this. It's very easy to, to think that you are on fire when you just have a good singing voice or you're naturally friendly and no one would think otherwise. Mm, come on, bro. But the, the clue uh, is connected directly to the site and to things you'll see in the coming minutes. He says, for you say, I am rich. I have prospered. I need nothing. This is the attitude of ancient Laodicea. Wow. And we'll illustrate that later. But Jesus says, not realizing you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. What a contrast, thinking I'm doing fine spiritually. And Jesus says, you no, you're poor. You, you, you're blind. You're naked. <laughs> and then he gives them the counsel, familiar, to buy gold refined by fire, white garments that you can clothe yourself, and the salve to anoint your eyes. So with the garments and the eye stuff and the money, this all relates to God. So we'll take that in a moment. And then, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. They're still in fellowship with God. They're not disfellowship for being, quote, lukewarm. But what is the lukewarmness of which we just read? What is the underlying sin? And sadly, when I ask audiences, what was the sin of Laodicea? You know what the answer is almost all the time? <laughs> they say they were Lack of wrong. commitment. Well, that's like saying, oh, the problem is she's not feeling well. Yeah, the problem is she has a high fever. I don't. No. <laughs> 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 quarantine you. <laughs> someone's, <laughs> someone's got a fever. <laughs> the problem is not that you have a fever or don't. I mean, this is just, that's a symptom. I mean, come on. Mm, right, right. The problem is 
they don't really feel a need for God. Life is so comfortable. The UK is a pretty comfortable place to live for the nine of us who live there right now. The US and Canada are pretty comfortable. Ireland's pretty comfortable. I mean, there are a lot of countries that are pretty comfortable, and if we're really honest, you could go through seven days of a week not even thinking about God, because you don't, what do you need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could pray God for my paycheck, for getting my paycheck for food, but the refrigerator is full. Mm -hmm. Isn't this the, the besetting sin of, of the modern West? Mm -hmm. And he says, be zealous and repent. So it's dangerous. Now, I understand why the evangelicals use verse 20 about conversion. I stand at the door and knock and let... You know, they say mm -hmm. that Jesus knocked you at the door and this mm -hmm. is how you get saved. Mm -hmm. Because in a way you do have to open your heart. He does come in. But of course this has nothing to do with initial salvation. And so it's misused. This is written to the church. They are Christians. They're in a dangerous place. They've actually pushed Jesus outside. Yeah. And he's saying, let's resume fellowship. There's no need for them to hear the word again or to be baptized. No, no, no. Simply to change your attitude to repent. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in with him and eat with him and he with me. And I could actually, I can end it there. There are a few more verses. But it's a passage not for non-Christians to become saved, but for Christians to stay saved in a dangerous climate with the choking atmosphere of materialism all about, which makes us feel we don't really need God. He's an activity. He's an event. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Wednesday night, or whatever. We really don't need them. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever struggled with that? Mm. Mm -hmm. You were just felt like pretty confident, really had nothing to do with God. I have. But a lot of us have. I think it's a very dangerous uh, situation. It's perilous. And I think it's, it's powerful. And not just in the West, not just in prosperous countries, in the poorest countries. Too. Very true. Materialism catches on, and people, yep. people want to become rich, they want things, yep. and we do that, we love things. Very true. We end up using people instead of using things and loving people. Mm -hmm. We lose our perspective. Yep. It's right. not helped at all by those false preachers, those false prophets. That's right. They say if you follow God, he'll make you healthy and wealthy. Come on, right. right. That is not the gospel yep. of Come anything. On, you could argue the opposite. No, I wouldn't argue the opposite. Well, loud to say, I. The problem wasn't that, that they were lukewarm. It's much, much earlier, much more fundamental than that. And try to keep that in mind as we walk around these ancient ruins and consider the words that were spoken to them by the Lord sometime in the second half of the first century. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Okay, so, I, so could I just...